Are you looking for a way to organize your CNC mill tools but don't have a system set up? I've got an easy one for you. Let me show you. To give a little more explanation, when a tool comes out of the machine and we take it from the spindle and we put the tag back on it, it keeps track of the gauge length so that we don't have to measure it again. And then we can just enter that into the machine when it goes back into the machine. But when we store it, we take the tag out and that means that that tool is empty in the machine, which helps identify and keep things organized. What's in this machine? I have to go around the side here and look, and the pocket numbers don't line up with the actual tool number. This simplifies so much of that. So you take the tag, and then when we go sort of the tool, it's just up here. It's set up. It's reliably set to the right gauge length, which has been measured by our Renishaw probe inside. You can do this. How do you make your tool tag labels? That's probably the hardest part. I get that question a lot. So we finally made a template that's easy to download and then just import data to with a CSV file. So I'll walk through how to do that. Start with, we use a Dymo 450 Turbo Label Writer. Don't worry about the reviews. It works fine on Mac or Windows. I've used it for both for many years. And we use a one by two and an eighth inch label. And you can get those as third party. We've got links to all that. Look in the description. We'll have a kind of a link guide where to get all the downloads. You do want to get their Dymo Connect download, which is the software we're going to use, which is this. I have it installed on my Mac here. You'll download a template from us, which first I like to make it bigger. So I fit the design area. It's not good software. It works, but it's really clunky and slow. So just be patient. You have a bunch of fields here that we've predetermined for you, but it's just text. But if you've ever used a data merge before in Microsoft Word, I believe can do this or InDesign, you basically are replacing some aspect with data from a spreadsheet or a CSV file. So keep in mind, if you don't like our template, change it. This is just a starting place. We have each of these fields that we're going to replace or change or modify however you want. I'm going to click import data. And I've got my template CSV file, which you can update with your own data or make similar to this. All you need is basically columns of data with headings for each of your tools. And we're going to use the first row as column headers because we don't want this as one of our options. And I'm going to select all. So I have a couple examples here. That's loaded now, and you're not going to see any difference to data merge. You can click on any one of these fields carefully, <laughs> and you'll see this little purple grid show up now. And that's what you want to click on. So this FL means flutes. You want to click here and find the item you want, which should be this number two in this case. Uh, they're not labeled super well, but that would be the number of flutes. Some of these are hard to click. Overall length, that would be three and a half in this tool. You kind of have to know each tool that's being displayed. So this is the 23250C of ours. It's our quarter inch compression cutter. So you just need to know one to be able to set this up and go down to CEL or cutting edge length. But what you're going to see when you open these is you're going to see this weird like giant text thing. Like I can put a inches after that. So here we'll type and I want that to be this compression chip breaker brand. Sometimes it's hard to click. <laughs> you get other stuff. I got a hold of it. I'm going to try and drag it out to a different spot. Kind of got it. Simple. You can also use the arrow keys, which is a good little hack here. Click on that stupid purple thing. And I want to delete out the brand part because that's just a placeholder. Drag it back to where I want it. Skew is 23250C. And then this GL is gauge length or the length of the tool. This one up here, delete all this. This is the diameter of the tool. Again, if you select at the end, you can add in other text. QR code is totally up to you. You can use it like a, a URL. If you have a link to like an ERP or like website link, uh, a lot of vendors to link straight to their tool or to purchase it again. You can also have it be just the SKU. So it's really easy. You just choose whatever that item you want it to be linked as. So it could be the 23250C a link straight to our website. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And that's pretty much it. So now we have two tools in this example. So I can click the little right button down here and I see the other one. But if you had 50 tools, everything that's in the CSV file would update accurately to show all of its details like this. It's just a matter of pushing print and we can go try this out. Out here at our label printer, 
So we can take our label off and we have positioned this little line here so that it's basically the perfect spot for where our edge view tags go. You can place it just like this. If you have any problems with the stick, you can use a little bit of glue stick or uh, we tend to not have any problems. You can also like breathe on it and get it hot, but they, they tend to last quite a while. What I like about these labels is when this uh, gauge length changes, you can just kind of peel it off again and stick it back on. So this works on any of these. We have currently four different sizes from the Cat 40 here in orange. This is BT30, BT40, and ISO30. And uh, we're working on more, potentially an ISO20 coming soon. You can use your QR code scanner or your phone to uh, scan these babies right into your computer. Pretty simple.